Good evening, folks. Perfect conditions here at the PFF National Football Center in Carmona Cavite as we get set for the second match of our doubleheader here in the Copa Paulino Alcantara. And it is a fantastic matchup that we have on our hands. A real intriguing matchup in Group A as we welcome the debutants. Dynamic Herb Cebu Football Club taking on uh, a bit of a trial by fire here against one of the veterans of top flight Philippine football, Stallion Laguna FC in the lone match for Group A. And you've got Jing Hamlam calling the action for you tonight, joined by Darren Hartman. And I, as I mentioned, Darren, it is an intriguing matchup with huge implications. I mean, this is a really interesting game of football. It's not just about, you know, how the teams are going to play. There's, there's players that we know, but players that we haven't seen, you know, suited up for Stallions, players that we haven't seen suited up for Cebu. And of course, Cebu on their first competitive game on this sort of level. There's so many unknowns, but there's so much to play for. And that's what makes this game exciting. And we are underway. Cebu getting us started. They'll be playing from left to right. Stallion in their traditional pink. And Stallion will be looking to rebound after a disappointing campaign last year. Coach Ernie Nieres very adamant. He wants to see a reaction from his club. They've been training relentlessly and they have welcomed quite a new new faces here um, with uh, some additions in the front line and the back line as well. So there's definitely been a shakeup in the offseason for Stallion. Well, I think that uh, Coach Ernie and the Stallion setup uh, were very good to let go of um, Arboleda and Melissa who were just in the game that we just featured with Kaya allowing them to play in the uh, AFC Champions League. And of course, that means those are two players that were starting you know, week in and week out for Stallions. That's opened up two slots for players to compete for. Uh, they've had a really tough selection process. They've looked at lots of players and it's, a, it, it's still Stallions, but it's a new look Stallions. Uh, they look sharp. And of course, uh, Cebu will be tested today. You look at Cebu, brand new at this level, but a lot of players are not. You can see some familiar faces. Earlier it was Cordova who had the ball at the back. You saw Waco Cañas as well, who is a real veteran in Philippine football. Yeah, we all know that Waco Cañas was obviously part of that really strong stallion side uh, several seasons ago. Uh, unfortunate, couldn't make it into the last bubble to play. Uh, but finds himself playing once again at the top level. Daniel Gadia continuing his football at the highest level, now with Cebu. And this is Saldivar. And captain giving it away there. First real look at Evren Tassi. What are the question marks in this game? Alongside the big man at the back there for Stallion. Gira looking to get a turn on Saldivar. That's well cleared away by Cordova. Sporting the blonde hair these days, Darren. Yeah, and uh, Jason's been there. He, he's capped for the senior national team as well. Uh, and on his day, you know, he's he's a very difficult defender to play against. I, mean, I had the, the privilege of uh, playing against him a few times. He, he's a feisty character. He, he leads, uh, you know, with his heart and he's definitely not shy to put a big tackle in. It's going to be a nice challenge for him tonight as he takes on Kim Sung Min. He used to play for Davao and is a real handful up top for Stallion. Headed away by Cordova. Kim looking for the run of McDaniel. That's cleared away by Wako Cañas. First bit of danger here for Cebu to deal with. And I think there that feeling Weber in goals just got to you know be a little bit sharper. Uh, but the experience there of Kanyas just clearing things out and Stallions now looking to build from a throw in high on the left hand side of the park. Kim bundled over but cleanly by Daniel Gadia. Corsame spreads it to the Argentinian Sendra. Looking for a bit of support. Dealing with a couple of pink shirts. He's looking for the corner kick. Spin wasn't on his side there. 
Vengardio doing there what we expect from him, just breaking up the play, getting on the ball with his head up, and then very quickly uh, putting the Cebu side on their attack. Tidy feet on the left-hand side there, Jing. Sendra complaining that he was held back. No whistle. And play continues here despite a late challenge. Counter-attack breaking down. Trying to keep it tidy here, Cebu. Away from danger. Ball to chase here for Korsame. And Pepito's just going to allow that safely back into his hands. Here's Placito. Born in the United States. First match here in the Philippines. One of three players here for Stallion who come from the California Baptist University. All the way back to Cordova, South of Looking for support here. Yagi having a nibble. That's Vineras, who Stallion missed last year. Alquiros. Dina Barley now with a new side after representing the Ascal's development team last year. He's found a new home at Stallion Laguna. Nick Tuason. Another stint with Stallion. Could get on the ball here. It's one on one with Cañas, and that's a well timed challenge from the Spaniard. And both teams are looking like they're trying to get the ball rotating across the back. We were asking each other questions, saying what sort of styles of football will these clubs try to play, considering what's up for grabs. And then Reva needed to get that one right. Did about just enough against Kim. In our seventh minute here, Darren. About as expected, would you say? I think so, yeah. I mean, Stallions are looking to punch the ball around. They're still adjusting to their shape. Uh, Cebu, it's nice to see that they're also trying to play football out of the back. Agadi is looking sharp in the middle, trying to keep things moving for them. But it's contested. Tassi losing out there. Has some experience playing in Turkey, at least in an academy setup over there. Evan Tassi. Sito has featured quite a bit here in the opening exchanges. It was wasn't a bad ball into the box. Return to sender. Look at Silva here, the Brazilian. New center back for Stallion. Certainly a lot of height and heft in the Stallion lineup, Darren. Yeah, they really uh, look as if they're built up from the back. You've got the experience there playing at this level uh, in Matthew Nieras and the two centre backs look good on the ball. They're punching it, keeping the tempo. But Cebu, they, they look like an organised setup. They don't look like they're phased at all uh, with the environment that they're in. A couple of times, maybe forcing it a bit long from the goalkeeper, but it is early. Alcaros has room to work. Daniel Gadia called for the foul. You mentioned at the top of the broadcast, Darren, that lots on the line here in this Group A matchup. Only two teams, so both guaranteed a spot in the semi-finals, but it's a matter of where you want to be placed in the semi-final. And I know that these teams would have watched the Kaya games, both of them. Uh, of course, they want to be scouting and looking at the opposition that they would be facing. And 
I'm pretty sure that both teams would prefer to avoid playing against Kaya, who are the informed team that have really set a standard, taking all six points out of six in that Group B. Haven't conceded a goal as well, Darren, and they looked pretty menacing earlier on against Mendiola. Well controlled by Cañas. It's a good touch from Kurosame. Delayed nicely there by the center back and it's Stallion now looking for the counter. Belgira with a switch. See getting around his man with ease. Cordova is there to clear away the danger. Kurosame. He's going to be the spark plug here for Cebu. Tempo's high. Ball's really going end to end really quickly. The volume on the pitch, Darren. There's certainly a lot of intensity even on the sideline. Kursame. Quick feet from him. Well, there are most certainly hotbeds in Philippine football and uh, uh, the, the owners of Dynamic Herb Cebu were really talking about how they wish to represent not just Cebu but also their neighbouring provinces. Uh, and you can just see by the players out on the pitch that they're playing with a huge amount of passion. And of course, Stallions who represent Laguna, this is almost, you know, Laguna against Cebu in a sense and that's something which I've been looking forward to for such a long time in Philippine football to have people really representing the areas where they come from. Free kick here for Cebu. Lofted ball. Half cleared here by Stallion. Tassi. All the way back now for the white shirts. They've acclimated nicely to this level. Dynamic Herb Cebu, at least in the opening 11 minutes. Oh, it's good to see the quality of the centre backs uh, from both sides. They're given plenty of width, punching the ball in, and there you can saw the pass from Kanyas just opening up the left hand side of the pitch. That's not an easy pass to make. Silva able to venture up to the center line. C dropping deep for that one, misplaces the pass. We're going to switch the play. Gets past Saldivar. Kim just going to let that one run. Two youngsters on this left flank for Stallion. Combining quite a bit in this match, Belgira and Ibarle. Cordova has been busy here in the opening exchanges and quite effective for Cebu. Same taking on Silva. That's one of the main men for Cebu, Ricky Sendra. She played for Stallion just last year. Live wise so far, Babu Korsame and from Tondo. Played his football with Kaya last year. And look at that. They're gonna get out of that hole, they're looking to switch it. Got 
Kaja with some room. It's there from Tassi. King Miyagi. One of the standouts from the UAAP. Applied his trade with the University of the Philippines. Quite a familiar face for those who watch the collegiate game. Yeah, of course, Jing. And he, he scored bags of goals at that level. But this is his first outing here against the professional club. He's grown a bit bored, waiting for the service up top. Kim dropping all the way into a third center back position. Barler under very little pressure looking to pick out a pass. It's into the hands of Ace Villanueva. A real veteran in goal here for Cebu. Lots of space here for Miyagi. Easy call for the referee. The Gira just crashing in from behind. So far, 50-50 in possession. Nothing much else to speak of. Just the Cebu with a couple more fouls than Stallion. Yeah, it's really been 15 minutes of uh, both teams really feeling each other out. They've just been doing it at a really high tempo. And it doesn't show any signs yet of settling down. Good ball in. Flag is raised immediately though. <laughs> Wako Kainas, a real meaty challenge there, but it was a clean one, said the referee. His victim, however, still down here for Stallion. Kim Sung Min. Needing a moment to catch his breath. Steve Supersensha not convinced, however. And it looks like Kim's gone into the game with uh, you know, a lot of strapping on his, uh, on his left thigh as well. Fantastic, a few seasons back. Really, really good. Clinical in front of goal. And of course, uh, the Cebu side will be looking to keep him at bay. Here is Kim. Gets it to Bilgira. Just haven't found their flow yet, Stallion. They've got a nice passage of play here. Alquiroz looking for the run. Lovely intention there from Stallion. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. No, just keeping the ball in rotation a little bit and then looking for those forward passes. Oh, Sabu are sitting you know, quite deep, waiting for Stallions to attack. Read well there by the defender. He's able to clear away. Good interception there. He's been busy, Placito. They've been testing his pace. Cebu. Gadia running right through Kim. But play on, says the referee. Kim has taken a whacking here early on. It's two tackles now that have left him crumpled on the ground. Stallion refusing to play the ball out. They've got a chance here. Bouncing around and it's poked in by Abu C. Capitalizing on the chaos and Stallion are in front. One nail to Laguna. As 
man from Senegal poked it in there. And again, Stallions Goal just a Stallion few combinations. The and then just looking Number to play seven. early. Nice, nice and early. C. Just try to get those little channels in between the defenders. And then they're just piling on the pressure. Let's have a look at it here. Dwasson with the reverse ball. He made it look easy there, Abu C. Meanwhile, his teammate was suffering on the turf. He'll feel better getting up and seeing the scoreline changed to 1-0. I mean, even, even with Kim on the floor there, they still committed players forward, Stallions. But Daniels was high. Yannick was high when he played that re little reverse pass. He's coming from that right wing position. And Stallions showing some intent. They play as if they want to get goal, Stallions. First blood to Stallion. I think we've got a serious game on our hands now, Jim. We're a very, very good game of football. Tassi looking for the early ball. Couldn't make the connection. Stallion now finding their confidence here. Sandra, we're going to switch the play. Sami has his pocket pick there. Dawson looking lively early on. Switch a play and almost a mess there from Pepito. Not what you want to see from your keeper. You want him assured in that spot. Yeah, and that was a good ball into the box. Put it into a dangerous area. Stallions there just caught a little bit off guard. Kim Sung Min has dropped in here. A much deeper role for Stalin. He's been caught again. That's three times, Darren. I mean, he's a class player. Uh, it almost looks as if he's got a little bit of a free roll, uh, and other players are adjusting. So when he drops a little bit deeper to get on the ball, I think McDaniel's is just, you know, McDaniel is keeping himself a little bit higher up the pitch. Seems to be working. Another link up here between C and Tuason. Osami. Both teams looking to play very quickly in transition. Almost at the halfway point. It's been played at a frantic speed, Darren. I suppose it's what you'd expect when you've been away from competitive football for so long. Yeah, but this is the sort of football that we should be seeing, you know, at the top level in the Philippines. It should be quick, it should be exciting. Yeah, that's upset. Felt that his opposite number got the final touch there. Badistasi on the other side. Ernie Harris. Can't believe it, it happened right in front of him. And of course, another thing, if, if you're playing for Cebu and you score the first goal for the club at this level, you go down in history. So there, there's all sorts of little things to play for in a game like this. There's some blown there, Asito. Looking quite solid on his debut. Able to keep Kentaro Miyagi pretty quiet here in the opening exchanges. Not too much of the man there, Ricky Sandra. Respect between former teammates. Yeah. 
Nathan Alkeros, of course, wearing the Captain Darn band for Stalin. He's grown into a real leader for this club. Kim looking to chip. Ace with a Nueva from way out there. Ambitious effort from the Korean. Let's have another look at it here. At the space. I mean, when you see stuff like that, you can see why he's a marked man. You know, good vision, thinking quickly. The Stallions also, you know, putting a work, putting a shift in, in their de defending as well. Sabu now struggling to find the connections. Kim. And Barley joining the attack. First times it to McDaniel. Brave there from Villanueva comes out to collect. Yeah, it was good build up from Stallions, but well read by Villanueva. And now straight away, Sabu on the tack. It's really end to end here. Barrios with a bit of a loose pass there. Kadia winning that duel. Such a handful in the middle of the field. Saldivar looking for Miyagi, just out-muscled. I think in these situations, you know, when the, the right and left fullback get on the ball, you've just got to be careful when you're rolling it into the corners. You want, you want a nice straight pass because on these artificial pitches, they're cambered and the ball really reacts to them. Very difficult for the winger when it's just angled into the corner like that. Miyagi gets goal side. Was there a tug? Nope. Waved away by Steve Super Sencha. Finn McDaniel. Well shielded there by Cordova. Dangerous moment there for Stallion. Yeah, it looks as if Miyagi had almost got away with that then. Don't forget, we don't have the uh, VAR here. <laughs> it's the old-fashioned way of refereeing. But credit where it's due, I think the referees have been fantastic so far this cup. Abu C venturing forward once more. Stallion now shading the possession. Seems they've settled in just a little bit quicker than Cebu. Only one shot for Stallion, but it's been on target and it's found the back of the net. So far, that's the, the statistic that matters. A little bit of tension here between Kursami and Silva. Actually, my mistake, it's 53% to Cebu in terms of possession. No, I can see that. I mean, when Stalins get the ball, it's very quick combinations. They're, they're trying to keep their width when they rotate, but they're really punching the ball. It's three or four passes, find a centre mid, and then they're just looking for those forward passes from as high up the pitch as they can. I'm sure as the game moves on, they'll be looking to adjust a little bit, uh, perhaps hold on to the ball a little bit longer. You see there, Jing, that Sabu are just rotating the ball a little bit slower, taking their time while they build up. Haven't found much joy on the wings, Cebu. They've been able to get into the midway area of the field, but haven't had much joy in the final third. Yeah. 
Closing in on the half hour mark here, Darren, what stood out to you so far? I think at the moment really is the tempo that the game is being played at. Uh, it's a great tempo, uh, but it's also the tempo that you know any team could get a goal. So at some point during the game, Stallions will have to start thinking about holding on to the ball, maybe starting to be a bit more patient, recycle the ball more often, because this could happen here. This is like a three against three if they can release the ball quickly. Definite pull there from Kim Sung Min. They're looking for a card. Steve Supersensha not convinced. Though there is definite, definitely a, an intentional aspect to that foul. Well, Kim did his maths quickly and was just checking. And if uh, Cebu were able to get the ball forwards and get an extra man forwards, Stallions would have been in trouble then. Look at that. Drag down. Miyagi showing he's a physical presence up top for Cebu. That more of a hopeful ball from Saldivar, easily cleared away. McDaniel off to the races. He's pushed that a little bit too far. God, he's just trying to ask for the tempo to be controlled a little bit. Of course, you've got to remember in transition, it really is the players in the middle of the park that are putting in the extra work. Alkiros, constantly hounded by Daniel Gadje. Can't be a fun match having Gadje breathing down your neck all throughout. ball forward here for Abu C. Villanueva has shown he's quick off his line. Looking for King. Easy ball to deal with there for the center back. Kiros afforded all kinds of room here in the middle. He's looking to pick out a pass. A little bit sloppy there from Cordova. Not under a lot of pressure. Unable to get past Saldivar. Yes, right. and the thing is, is that, you know, Stallions are you know, pushing the ball forwards quickly, but they're getting the run of the ball. Uh, they're, they're able to put pressure on, they're getting their little throw-ins, they're getting their little, you know, the run of the play. And it's really just going to take Cebu to, you know, put their foot on the ball and try to, you know, dictate the tempo a little bit more. Because at the moment, I think Stallions are slowly starting to edge themselves into control of the game. They seem to have addressed a lot of the weaknesses that they showed in the previous year. Ernie is doing a lot of work during the off season to plug some of the holes. As you mentioned, they did lose two key players in Janja Meliza and Fitch Arboleda. But they have reinforced quite nicely over the off season. It's a good interception from Dabao. He has it taken away by Alquiroz. Looking for options here. It barely arrives. Switching the play. McDaniel just looking to peel away, but Daba is there. Offside is McDaniel. Charles Dabao the third on that left back position for Cebu. 
actually named best striker in one of the recent camps here in the Philippines, but he finds himself in a defensive position today. And he's been very busy on that left flank for Cebu. Nice switch of play here. Baris Tassi looking to bring it down. And here he is, Dabao, on the overlap. Unable to connect there with Miyagi. At the moment, it's very difficult to pick, you know, which team will come out on top in this game. Uh, Cebu do look like when they're going forwards, they've had a lot of time together. I think the difference is really is the amount of playing time together at this sort of level. That's not a bad cross in as well. Looking for his brother there on the opposite flank. Bad to Evren. Interesting tactical battle here between Ernie and Yeras and Bing Bing Kulina. Bit of high pressure here, paying off for Cebu. Gadia, can he get a shot away? That's blocked by Silva. Second opportunity. Stallion hold firm. Tuason. Just slowing it down. Tug there. And Steve Super Sanchez just keeping the cards in his pocket here in the first half. Yes, and that's sensible refereeing. I mean, we have to remember the importance and the weight of this game. It's the only game in Group A. If you win it, then you wait to see who you play. If you don't win this game, you'll be facing Kaya, the inform Kaya. Uh, in the semi-final and the knockout phases of this cup, so there's a lot to play for. Let's remember this competition has AFC implications. Stallion recently got their license approved to participate in AFC competition, so they're definitely going to want to improve their chances of making it all the way to the final. And right now, so far so good. So there are th three clubs in this competition that have the AFC uh, accreditation and there are two slots to play for. So there's a lot to play for. I was speaking with uh, Coach Ernie uh, and I can remember the days when you know, Stallions were, you know, were, had that dominant phase. Uh, but we weren't yet representing on that club level. And I said to him, it, it, that would have been a team that I would have been proud to have cheered for. And I really hope that, you know, Stallions get their opportunity when the time comes to represent the Philippines. Because they have been a club that have been in all the competitions. They're professional and they're humble when they don't win. And they've come back uh, this time round with a much stronger squad, very well prepared. And that's been the mission for coach Ernie Nieres to bring back the glory days for Stallion. Of course, I reminded him that it was our team that knocked him out of the cup that year. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, even with that being said, uh, there, there are players on the pitch who you know featured uh, back then. And I mean, it's outstanding to see you know this player here on the ball, like Wacko, just you know still bossing it. And of course, the experience that he brings to the Cebu side at the back. And of course, Guardia as well, he's been there. Represented a few clubs at the top level. So the Cebu side over the next few seasons will definitely be, for me, a team to watch. Just too many touches there for Baris. Gives it away. Kim Sung Min bundled off. A little bit too soft there for the referee's liking. That's some good players on the bench for both these sides as well. Some exciting players. So the game could turn any moment. Wako Kainas absolutely needed to win that one. Kurosame. Can he get away? Chance here for Tassi. Can he bury it? Squares the ball. 
And that's behind the intended target. Nieres able to clean it up here. Best opportunity for Cebu so far. Opportunity missed. See, has it Barley? It's one of those. It's one of those games, Jinx, where it's so hard to show the replays because it's just end to end to end to end. But what a chance that was! With five six minutes to go in the first half, reward for all your hard work. So far, Papo Corsame has been proving the danger man for Cebu. He's been wriggling free from his markers, causing problems here for the Stallion back line. C. Called for offside. Cebu's certainly not looking out of place here, Darren. However, they do show signs of a bit of disjointedness. One of those things. Do, do Stallions just slow the game down now? See out the last five minutes, bit of game management. But I mean, if you slow it down, you do allow Cebu to get a little bit of recovery in, and they could counterattack you even quicker. Or do you just drive the tempo up and, and put the game beyond them? Difficult decisions to make from the coaching staff, and, but of course the players out on the pitch have got to feel it as well. Placita showing some range in his passing. Tuasen. Gets it to McDaniel, but it's a loose touch. Sandra. Into Everett's path. You can take on a Barley here. Lots of space to work with. Unable to get it to the hard-working Corsame. Rare opportunity to breathe here for both sides. Sandra being hounded by Belgira. Almost an entire half of football to see the new recruits in action. Here is Placito being tested once more. And he wins that duel with Papu Corsame. What's the verdict so far on the new faces, Darren? He's the biggest player I've seen in a long time. I mean, but to be fair, his distribution has been excellent. Uh, and he's looking as if he's, you know, settled in talking well, uh, building good relationships with the players around him. But there's a few good players out there who have been, I wouldn't say debuts, because it, it's obvious that most people out here have played at a relatively good level. But I mean, in terms of playing at, at this level in the Philippines, there's been some excellent little debuts on both sides. The game's still too close to call, Jing. Nice little exchange here on the right side, but it's the final ball that's missing. So they're looking for McDaniel. He hasn't found much joy quite yet up top for Stallion. Neither team have been that efficient on the ball. Uh, I think there's, you know, the ball's been turned over a lot of times. And it could become one of those cases. The fitter team wins, the team who wants it more wins. And of course, the strength and depth of, uh, of the benches. Quite interesting to see how Cebu adapt to the pace. Of course, they've been training in their own facility in Cebu, so they've had a lot of time on the pitch. They did have to fly over here from Cebu. The only team to have done so. Yeah, but they're settling down. I mean, they're, yes, they're one nil down, but they seem to have settled. They're moving the ball around and they're creating chances. 
Well, could see another chance created here. Tassi gets behind Belgira. Unleashes a shot, but it's off target. Showing signs of danger now from the left flank. Well, that looked like a little cheeky nutmeg from here. Mm. Belgira is not going to want to see this replay. Here it is once more. Oh, around him. Not through the legs, but still. Good piece of skill. Yeah, we've seen eight goals already in this competition. Eight good team goals, but we've not really seen like a, you know, a highlight sort of goal yet. So, and of course, how fitting would it be for, you know, Sabu's first goal in this competition to be, you know, a screamer? Let's get the whole of Sabu standing on their feet, screaming at their televisions. Placido, crossfield pass. Find its mark there, Abu C able to keep it in. Of course, as I say that, ball makes its way over to the sideline. Just a solitary minute to be added on. Just about kept in. Final play now. Sandra finding room. Saldivar closed down very quickly. Glance at the watch from Steve Supercentra. He's going to blow the whistle now. It's half time at the PFF and National Football Center as Stallion Laguna find themselves with their noses in front after 45. So far so good for the veteran side as they take on the debutants who find themselves just a goal behind here in the opening exchange. Goal from Abu C, the difference so far. And Dynamic Herb Cebu will be looking to regroup and get back into this match. So far, they've shown that they are no strangers, or at least they belong at this level, but they haven't been able to carve open the Stallion side quite yet. And we take a look at the highlight here. Alkiros pulling the strings for Stallion Laguna. And Yannick Tuason has been a real spark plug for Stallion, and here he is, the moment that has been the difference so far. A little bit scrappy, but they won't mind, Darren. Yeah, it's been one of those games. It was end-to-end -end for, you know, 30, 35 minutes. Stallions getting the run of the play and getting their goal. But I think as the game progressed, Stallions started to show exactly what they were about. But Cebu, in the last five, 10 minutes, just really started to calm down, settling to a good rhythm. So it's got it's a really open game. Uh, it could go either way. Arguably, it could be 1-1. One, one. All to play for as we hit the halftime break. We'll catch you for second half action in just a bit.
in a battle for supremacy in Group A. Stallion Laguna will be the happier of the two. 1-0 currently the scoreline as the veterans have the number of the debutants so far, but it's been a competitive affair after 45 minutes. Cebu having some chances of their own and they're going to be making a halftime substitution as well. We will get the details of that in just a moment. But as we mentioned, this is a crucial game in Group A. It will de decide the seeding for this group as they enter into the semifinals. You are watching live coverage of the Copa Paulino Alcantara, the second match of our doubleheader on this Wednesday. And we are live here at the PFF National Football Center in Carmona, Cavite. 45 minutes to go here, Darren. And as you mentioned, all to play for. What are you looking forward to the most here in the final period? I think this could really become a tactical game, uh, not in regards to tactics as changing playing styles. I think Cebu will settle a little bit more. They showed signs of that in the first half, but I think that the timing of the substitutions uh, will really play a factor on keeping things fresh. Uh, this is showing no signs of slowing down. It's being played like it's a knockout game. Uh, I mean, there's only one game in this group, as we said. And of course, the winner of this goes on to top the group. So it's really going to be all about which teams make the least mistakes. That's what it's going to be about. Uh, whether or not Stallions will settle down and start trying to keep the ball and recycle it a bit more, I have no idea. But at the moment, I am just really enjoying seeing these two teams just go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, box to box. Before I ask you who has impressed you the most here, Darren, let's confirm the substitutions for Cebu. The two Tassi brothers on the wings have been replaced. Nicolas Ferrer, who is, of course, a veteran of FEU and several clubs in the top flight already, has checked in, as well as a more unfamiliar face in Jaime Rosquillo. A man from Barotac Nuevo, Ilo Ilo. He's going to get a look in this game. Huge opportunity for him. Now, Darren, now that we've confirmed the substitutes, uh, who's been impressing you from both sides? I mean, at the moment, I think Gardi is really matured. Uh, I've not seen him play for a couple of seasons. Uh, he's always been rated. He's always been there or thereabouts, but he looks leaner. He looks like he's got a, a, a better head on his shoulders. He's showing stronger leadership skills. Uh, and of course, his distribution has been excellent in the middle. Looks like he's got a little bit more range to his game, as you were saying during the break. And I think that at the moment, he's been reliable. And that's what you need in that holding centre mid position is someone who's reliable. Of course, Stallion able to get a goal in that opening half. Haven't been in complete control of this game, however. As we mentioned, the fluidity is still a bit lacking for the veteran side, but who's been standing out for you there? Well, for Stallions, it, it's really been about, you know, the way that they play. Uh, they have been pushing the ball forwards quite quickly, but I think the, both of the centre-backs for Stallions, uh, their first games for Stallions, excellent debuts, not conceded yet, and the distribution coming from those two have been really good. So I think both of the centre-backs from Stallions are having really good games, but of course, Kim is excellent. Uh, he, he, he's a class player. Uh, he doesn't look to be at his most mobile, but really between those three, they look they've got a lot of experience and they can make things happen. 6-3 for Abraham Placito, who's been very busy for Stallion. His partner, the Brazilian, Gabriel Silva, 6-2. And you've got Kim Sung Min, who is about that size as well. So certainly look formidable physically. Of course, the goal scorer for Stallions as well is uh, is no push around. That's right, Abu C from Senegal. Real force as well, 6-2 he's listed as. But I mean, don't be put off if you're at home and you're, you know, fair of height. Uh, there's plenty of players playing at this level who, you know, aren't as tall. Normally they're sharp, they're technical. Of course, we, we saw Amita play for Kaya, who is a real good example of that. And of course, Guardia here playing in the middle of the park, pulling strings, making it happen. So sometimes you've got to be smart as well. But of course, there are certain positions where you know, the extra physicality does help. 
And that's where they were kind of lacking last year. They had Reynold Villarreal and uh, Matthew Nieres in the middle of their defense, who, of course, quite skillful players, but uh, not the most uh, commanding presences in defense. Dabao. One of the bright spots for Cebu. Perhaps if you are a supporter of Dynamic Herb Cebu, you'd like to see Ricky Sender more on the ball. Didn't get a chance to really express himself in that opening half, and we know his quality, Darren. Ball to chase there for Ferrer. Counting by Iwan Dun, para kay Dean Ebarle. Actually, that's Jaime Rosquillo. But that's what fresh legs can do. And that's what I said. This could become a, a game of tactics, knowing when to freshen up your team. And Rosquillo was the MVP of the 2019 Palarong Pambansa. It comes from... Uh, footballing background in Barotac Nuevo, you know that place produces so many great talents here in the Philippines. He's caught napping there for a moment. Canas looking for the early ball there. Oh, Salmon the intended target. Toasson. It's a bit too soft. Sandra taking over. So Blue getting a lot of the ball in this match. We did mention in the first half that they actually shaded possession statistics. So on side here, Corsame. Brave goalkeeping from. Pepito needed to get that one right. Flag it stayed down there, Darren. Yeah, that was good football there by Cebu. It was patient. They managed just to, to work a good angle, just to flight the ball in. It's fantastic timing of the run as well. And brave goalkeeping. Corner kick here for Cebu. And it is not fun marking Jason Cordova from a, from a set piece. Maybe one of the target men. Saldivar's delivery. And that's well headed away there from Placito. Sendra trying to find some room. Still got bodies in there. It's a long ball for Sendra. It's a cushion. It's rather sloppy from Rosquillo. Alkiros happy to slow things down. Bit of a loose pass there from Belgira. Disaster averted by Stalia, but a bit of a nervy moment for them. Showing his range, Placito. Just enough, Jason Cordova. It's been a measured performance so far from the veteran center back. Yeah, they've they've been busy uh, in regard to having to drop their lines and you know watch out for Stallions playing those passes through. Uh, but apart from the goal, really, not really had a lot to do. Can't really take responsibility as well. The, the goal was really sheer pressure with Stallions really pushing high. Uh, but they are playing their part both between Waco and uh, Jason in, in keeping the ball moving and, and setting up you know, the tempo that Sabu is playing at the moment. Ball, ball movement is much better. Looking to switch it. Cut out by Matthew Nieres. C, one on one with Cañas. Counter attack just about stopped in its tracks. Stallion looking to build here. 
Arqueros finding himself crowded out. Been a, been a bit of a trend in this match so far. Pasito under pressure, dealing with it nicely. Kim popping up all over the pitch here, but unable to get the return ball. And here is Kim. Able to get around the keeper. But couldn't keep it in there, McDaniel. No, it has stayed in. See? That is just wide. Yeah, at the moment, the two front men of Cebu, they're, they're working really hard in defensive transition. I just wish that when Cebu was building up, one would show short and one would be looking to spin off. Uh, and a couple of times that's led to, you know, Stallions can, can cheat a little bit and they can keep the extra man just floating in the middle. And then, unfortunately, on that instance, it was Kim. And we know the sort of quality he has when he plays his passes forwards. And if McDaniels got on the end of that earlier, that could have been a, a goal against the run of play. And you get punished at this level. Game continuing to be played at a frantic pace here. Steve wants a conversation. He wants to chat with Gadia here. Gadia is a player you can count on to get stuck in. Certainly attracts a lot of emotion on the pitch. Type of player that you'd love to have as a teammate, but you'd hate to play against. A bit of keep ball there between Yeres and Kim. So battles going on there, both physically and verbally, of these players. Well, with 35 minutes to play and uh, Cebu still searching, not just for their first goal in this game, but you know, for their first goal at this level, it's going to be a really important goal if it does come. So there is so, so much to play for still. And I, you can understand you know, the passion is out there. They flew over and they were feeling like they represent something and they're playing like it. So, And of course, there are a few characters at Stallions that aren't going to back down from a challenge. Let's have a look at it here. One, two, three, four. He's trying to get Silva involved there. Of course, Matthew Nyanis and Daniel Gadia. Been rivals for a long time, going back to UAAP days. Gadia for UP and Matthew Nyanis for La Salle. I think Yannick Twarsson's having a, a good game in regard to just keeping it simple. I mean, Yannick of the past has, has been, you know, very aggressive in terms of his, you know, getting himself in one-on-one -on -one situations. But with maturity, he's just looking how to keep, just keep the ball. He was always going to give it away when I was talking about him as well. But <laughs> he's having a good game. He is keeping it simple and I like it. A calming presence here for Stallion. A look of frustration from Koichi Belgira. As you mentioned in the first half, Darren, just a bit of a free roll here for Kim Sung Min. It's popping up all over the pitch for Stallion. Gadia winning another ball. It's been one slip up for this back line, otherwise, they've been quite solid. Yeah, they just have to be careful when, when Stallions counter attack quickly because. You know, during rotation, both Wacko and uh, Jason, they're, they're quite far from each other. So, you know, when you get your head up and you look, it does look as if you could play that pass straight down the middle. And it's unfortunate at this level when you get caught out by a pass like that, but it can happen. Trying to lift it into Sendra. They've just overcooked a few of those balls now. No. 
13 minutes into this second half. And basically, we've just seen a carryover from what we saw as the trend in the first. The pace has not suffered at all. Gadia has support on the left side. That's cleared away at the near post. Saldivar has switched over to the left side. Saldivar momentarily thought of the short option. It's a deep ball in. Sito gets his head to it, but it's only half cleared. Cebu starting to get a foothold here. Not on the same wavelength. Here, Bing Bing Colina on the bench, trying to encourage his boys. Here's that delivery once more. Like there's an injury here for Stallion. Bit of concern as Finn McDaniel might require a bit of treatment here. Finn McDaniel, a familiar face, part of the under 23 setup at the SEA Games. hour remaining in this contest. Kim looking to rifle into the pass of Nathan Alquiroz. Possession statistics now skewing the way of Cebu even more so now Darren. 58% for the men in white. However they have not improved their shot total, it still remains at two. But Stallion, similarly have had a rough time creating chances, Darren. Still just two shots. But most importantly, they do have a goal to their name. And Dean unable to prevent the corner kick. So a third corner now for Cebu, and there's a bit of a scuffle going on here with Waco Cañas involved with Yannick Tuason. Waco Cañas really taking offense here. Both teams needing to be separated. Oof, tensions flaring now. It's Cordova who's doing the peacemaking as Dabao also involved in his own little scuffle. Waco Cañas having a word with Silva. And now everybody needing to just relax here. Cooler heads prevailing. The veterans asserting their control. Nick and Waco making up. Yeah, Nick and Waco. Last year played together actually for Moharlika. There it is. Touch of hands. Bit of peace restored on the pitch. Still a corner kick here for Cebu. Steve needing to sort out. If there is any extra action that needs to be taken. And there's gonna be a substitution pending here for Stallion as well. Let's take a look at what Steve Supersensha decides. Substitution for Stallion Laguna FC. Player number eight, 
Griffin McDaniel replaced by player number 17. So Alan, Alan Angeles, Angeles is going to be checking in now for Stallion as he replaces Griffin or Finn McDaniel. And it looked like he picked up an injury on the previous passage of play. Steve Supercentra wants a word with a few players. And it looks like it was Saldivar and Toasun who got involved. Steve Supercentra not quite finished with the conversation. Yellow card for Toasun and yellow card for Saldivar. Both <laughs> parties looking a bit bemused. But for everybody else, quite expected that they would get booked. <laughs> Just goes to show exactly what it is that everyone's playing for. Cebu are getting ahead of the game in terms of possession, not creating many opportunities, but are winning themselves their corners, creating chances. And the Stallions know that they've got to step it up a little bit. They have to deal with this corner first. Ferrer's corner. Ooh, made a connection there. Got in between the two center backs, but not on target. There was a bit of a worry, Darren, when the news came out that United City had pulled out, leaving only two teams in Group A, that perhaps this match would have little bearing. But you look at the action on the pitch, and you can see how much it means. been physical, it's been high tempo, it's been entertaining. Angeles getting involved immediately. Cañas just about able to get the ball away from danger. Silva finding C. Using his body well there, and Cordova taking over. Goal scorer still proving a menace. Just persistence from Abusi. Well, you called it earlier in the game, or oh, before the game started. He's a sort of player that. You know, you just let run at people, causes a nuisance, makes things happen. Deep delivery over the group of players in the middle. See able to save it here for Stallion. Sendra skipping away. 2v2. Saldivar gets it to Corsame. Last ditch defending, and a crucial clearance from Dina Barle. Two v two, as you mentioned, Darren, a real opportunity there for Cebu squandered. It's Saldivar. Who's sending this one in? Another deep delivery. This time from Cebu. Bodies clashing there. Nothing coming of it for Cebu. There may be people watching this wondering what happens if it's a draw. Uh, so I did ask for the confirmation that it will come down to uh, to fair play. It will come down to red cards, then yellow cards. And should the red cards and yellow cards be equal, it will come down to a coin toss. And right now, yellow cards are equal. It is one of the most <laughs> equal games. The only thing that Cebu haven't done is scored their, their debut goal. But of course, the, the more that Cebu push, push for that goal, the more that the clock runs down, the more opportunity there is for Stallions to catch them on the counter-attack. And I think that looks as if it's one of the strengths of Stallions at the moment. Vito taking his time here. Go, 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 go. 
finding room. Alan Angeles. And that's well timed from Cordova. Tuason. Well read there by Dabao. Still not out of their own half here. Kim using his body well. Kim finally getting a whistle in his favor. He's taking quite a beating in this game. Kim Sung Min. Just a little too much from Wako Kanyas. Yeah, Wako knows, I mean, difficult there, difficult situation. He's put the pressure on the player, but these set pieces are just an opportunity for Stallions just to take a little bit of the tempo out of the game. Played it short here. He's got good range, Placito. Angeles, looking tidy since he's come on. Korsame, or rather that's Miyagi who won that duel with Placito but only momentarily. Broken, broken play could come to something here for Cebu Saldivar. Taking on Silva. And that's dangerous from Yannick Tuas when he's already in trouble here. And it's a yellow for Yannick Tuason. He's sent off. And he's allowed his emotions to get the better of him. And that's a letdown for Stalin Laguna. Salvador's also got to be careful as well because uh, if you actually react or ask for yellow cards, it's actually a bookable offense. Now here we go. 20 minutes to go. Stalin down to 10. Free kick, Cebu. And of course, uh, if you had just heard what I said about the uh, fair play rule, should Cebu get themselves to 1-1, they would avoid playing against Kaya on the fair play rule. Let's have a look at it here. Saldivar. He's not going anywhere, Jing. And you can see hands on his head, Silva. Just so disappointed, shaking the head. He, knew, he knows what's coming. It is a yellow card and a sending off for Yannick Toasson. You have to be disappointed there. Yannick Toasson, a veteran. And it's just a silly mistake. Sandra gets it low. Yeah, and he wasn't having a bad game. I thought he was being tidy until, you know. They got into his into his head a little bit. It got a little bit physical. And they played into the hands of Stallion here. I believe that means he's automatically suspended for the semi-final match as well. So this will be asking more now from Kim. He's going to have to cover a little bit more ground in the middle. Angeles will just switch over to the right-hand side. Substitution now about to take place here for Cebu. It's a double substitution, and it's a name that we're familiar with. JB Borlongan being brought in. He's taking off former teammate at UP, Kentaro Miyagi. Substitution. Dynamic and we're going to see FC. Player number nine, a second Quintaro substitution Miyagi with Lorenzo Genko coming on. Genko taking off Dabao. Charles Dabao the third, replaced by number 15, Lorenzo Genko. 
So, Dabao, who had a pretty good debut here for Cebu, being replaced by, I believe, a Filipino Italian in Lorenzo Genko. Just a little bit over 15 minutes to showcase their talents here, the substitutes. And of course, uh, JB Berlanga's brothers already featured in this Copa. Paulino Alcantara playing left wing for ADT. Pedigree in the family. Both brothers have represented at national team level. And I think a good introduction into this game as well. A little bit of pace and just has a good knack for scoring goals. And that's exactly what Cebu need at the moment is a goal. It's a like for like change for Miyagi as Berlongan takes up the striker role. It's going to be lined up alongside Papu Kursame. So expect a lot of pace up front for Cebu now. Ball remains with Cebu. Long-range effort. Cebu have given up a bit more possession here. 52-48 says the statistics. The fouls 13 for Cebu, five for Stallion, but a couple of those led to yellow cards. That's the reason why they're down to 10 men. Oh. Gonna be very interesting to see how that affects them moving forward here. Yeah, this is a real classic cup game. One team down to 10 men, they're 1-0 up. And there's 15 minutes to play. Lots of room in the middle here for Cebu now to work with. Seems Stallion just happy to drop deeper. Switch a play from Cañas. Just a bit short of the intended target. And here's a problem for Cañas. C getting away. As they get entangled, it's going to be a yellow card. And he's been saved there by the positioning of Jason Cordova. Very, very smart there from Jason Cordova. As soon as he saw that Waco was beaten for pace, it was obvious that was going to that was going to happen and he just made sure that he made a beeline to get in behind him so the offence would only be a yellow card and not a red card. Of course red card reserved for a last man challenge but clearly Jason Cordova replaced Waco as the last man but that's the kind of danger that Abu C brings. And we said as Cebu start pushing forwards, it's just going to open up. It will become you know, very direct from Stallions. Uh, they are sitting deep. They are sitting compact. They're a man down. But if they can slow down Cebu, they can grind it out. Look at this. It's Placito who's over, over the ball. He's going to shoot as well. He's going to go for it. Got a lot of power on that. That's not going to be fun when you're in the wall. I felt that from here. Cebu so far unable to take advantage of the numerical advantage. Alkiros muscled off. Now a chance for Cebu to build here. Saldivar using his pace, it's just a bit too much. Mm. 
but a lot of energy, Saldivar. Stalin just trying to slow the game down a little bit. Another good header away here from Jason Cordova. It's been an assured performance from him, the veteran. Sandra just trying to launch it forward here. Oof. Coming together. No whistle. Play continues. Chance here for Ferrer. Into the stride of Genko. Unable to control it. Borlongan looking to wriggle free. The stallion survived the danger. And that's poor from Ferrer. Ibarle needing a moment. Had put in a really strong challenge on Gadia. And he's come out worse for wear. As Ibarle receives treatment, they're going to be down to nine momentarily. Let's have a look at it. He crashed into the back of Genko. Hurt himself in the process. Quick look at Ernie Nieres, who's going to be hoping these 10 minutes tick away faster than not. with a mismatch shoes. Coach Ernie. Better in smarts from Waco Cañas. Saw the arm extended. Got the whistle. This is where Cebu need to turn it up a notch. 10 minutes remaining of this Group A encounter. So glad you could join us. Live here at the PFF National Football Center in Carmona Cavite, Jing Hamlang and Darren Hartman calling the action. It's whether or not Cebu have got the experience to try to pull apart this really compact and deep defense of Stallions. I mean, if, if Stallions keep it compact, keep it deep, and they're forcing Cebu to put the ball into the box, you're going to fancy the two center backs of Stallions to win that all day long. It's on the counter-attack where Cebu have looked the most dangerous. Angeles has it taken away. Gadia unable to keep that in. Sandra has his head up. Well read. Stalin now just happy to soak in the pressure. Probing on the left side with Saldivar. Wasn't much support there for Saldivar. Had to beat two men. And yeah, he's done a lot of running as well. His legs are going to start feeling it. They need to start looking for other options. Start looking at your fresh legs. Try to get them running in behind. Trying to pen them in here. Cebu. I'm in. Outside. Outside. Thank you. Hey. 
and Sandra trying to quicken the pace. Yeah, Sandra's obviously played a lot of football, so you kind of get a feel for these sorts of games. And if he starts on trying to pick up the tempo, other players need, really need to follow. Trying to switch the play. Accuracy not there for Cebu, and they're looking a little bit disjointed here as they chase this match. Yeah, with seven, eight minutes to go, I mean, you can't rely on half chances anymore. You've really got to look to try to create your chances. Stallions have settled into their yeah, deep, compact defensive unit, and they really need to know just how to switch the ball quicker, start pulling them around, start moving their lines up and down. If not, Stallings will be able to see this game out. Kanyas having to deal with the threat of C once more. That's a 50-50, a hefty one between C and God. Yep. Kanyas picking himself up. Switch a play from Sendra. And that's poor from Borlongan. But that's exactly what they need to do. They need to switch the play. They need to stretch Stallions. The centre backs of Stallions are enjoying this sort of game. You know, when you're in the zone and you're working with your, your, your partner at the back, you, sometimes you know, you just know that you're stopping the team. Five minutes remaining. Cebu hunting an equalizer that would propel them to top spot in Group A. But as it stands, Stallion looking good to take the top seed. They will face either the Azkaz development team or Mendiola. That is the case as Bing Bing Colina, an animated figure on the sideline. Sipu coach trying to urge his side to find some inspiration here. Angeles up against two. There will be a lot of added time though, Jing. You can expect a few minutes go up on the board. Uh, we've had a few handbags. Uh, we've had a red card. We've had a lot of substitutions as well. So expect a few more minutes extra play. For long and the intended target once again, he switched flanks. Korsame. It's been kept a little bit more quiet in this second period. They play quickly. For Longan. He's going to get that ball into the box and he missed everything. Just guilty of rushing it a little bit there, JB Borlongan. Yeah, the mindset of Sabu needs to be get on the ball, make something happen. Every time they get the ball now, they need an end product. If not, they're going to run out of minutes. Crosses, through passes, shots, as many as they can do with the time remaining. <laughs> Meanwhile, Stallions will play this way. And it's working. Cleaned up. Ferrer on the right side. Well cut out there by Ibarde. Well, you said that C was hard working. Uh, he is carrying a lot of work rate at the moment. Isolated against two experienced centre backs, but he's doing a job in, you know, getting on the end of these passes. If you just tuned in, scenario we have is Stallions are one 0 up, but down to ten men.
Free kick incoming. Delivery from the substitute. It's onto the head of Placito. Cut inside. And that's headed away for a corner. The type of range for JB. That's what I said, he's, he's got a knack for doing that sort of thing, but that's great defending. And another set piece for Cebu. Can they make this one count? In swinger. C with a header away. Drops for Genko. Couldn't get his footing correct. And Villanueva has come out to collect. Cordova. Takes it quickly. Angeles there for his defensive duties. Both center backs for Cebu deep into enemy territory. They're pushed all the way up now. Gadia. Cañas has stayed up. He's inside the box. Can Ferrer find him? Low cross is sent back. Left footed delivery this time. Bouncing around dangerously. Saldivar! Well off target. Under pressure now, Stalin, but they're holding firm. Four minutes to be added on. Additional time, four minutes. Held up there by Clifford Daipuyat. Confirmation of the four minutes. That's all the time remaining now for Cebu to chase the equalizer. A dangerous ball there. He's going to like this matchup. He's enjoying it out there. And here he is. He's just such a handful. Alquiroz to Angeles. A little bit behind the receiver. And Sandra unable to keep it in. And everyone pushed up for Cebu. They Look brittle on the counter. That's to be expected. Foul on Sandra. Gadja is going to go long. Finds Burlongan. Able to keep it in this time. Taking on Matthew Nieras. Oof. Not far away from Korsame. Ferrer. Stops on a dime. It's clean from Placito. And that's Unfortunate from Corsame as it gives Stallion an opportunity to take more time off the clock. A few more words being exchanged here, Ferrer and Silva this time. There's been a lot of tension in this game. Been a good debut for Placito. <laughs> Not his best ball of the match. Good pressure shown there by Kim. Saldivar definitely caught there. Flag was raised here on this near side. Vamos, 
Cebu running out of time here. That's a poor switch of play. Looking for JB Borlongan on the left side. That might have been their final opportunity, Darren. Yeah, it could be. It looks as if Stallings are going to be able to just uh, wind down the clock again. It's been a great game, though. It's not over yet. There could still be late drama, but the seconds are just fading away now for Cebu. But they find themselves in possession in the middle of the park. Korsami gets it wide. Borlongan. And that's safely into the hands of Pepito. Look at the watch from Steve Supersensha. He could be allowing the last passage of play here. So last roll of the dice here for Cebu. Saldivar looking to progress it. That's cut out. And there's the final whistle. Stallion Laguna do it. Seal top spot in Group A with Abu C's goal. The difference between the two sides. Valiant effort from the debutants. Dynamic herb Cebu. But just not enough from them on this occasion. As we take a look at Placito. Possibly the man of the match of this contest. First match here in the Philippines and he certainly made his mark, but that's the goal scorer on your screen, Abu Si, whose goal in the first half, the difference here, Darren Stallion, sealing top spot in Group A. Yeah, it was a great game. It was well contested, went all the way down to the wire with Cebu just plugging away, plugging away, but Stallions showing their resilience showing that they're a, a stronger setup than they were last year and they'll be happy to top the group and avoid Kaya in the next round but I think Cebu with the way that they started to combine the way that they were passionate will not be scared to face Kaya we look there at the goal and the moment which decided the fate of these two teams in the next round this was the goal the difference between the two teams, Yannick Toasson involved in that one. He was to be sent off later in the game, so he won't be involved in the semi-final, unfortunately, for Stallion. The big question is, who will they face in the next round? Will it be Mendiola or ADT? We will find out in three days, and we hope you can join us for that one on Saturday. But that's it for us here. For my partner, Darren Hartman, my name is Jing Hamlang saying, Thank you for watching the Copa Paulino Alcantara. Good night. Uh, actually, we, we don't have uh, nothing to lose because this is our first uh, game in the in the year also. And uh, but we play well. Uh, we're just unlucky. So, coach, just want to get your reaction on Stallion's goal. It should be respect. Per play is very important in our in 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 the, in the game of football. It should be respect. But uh, that's break of the game. I think it's it's done already. But it should be fair play. Okay. Coach, uh, last question. Um, who are you leaning towards to face in the semifinals? Uh, right now, we're already on top two. But for sure, it's Kaya already because they're top one in the bracket. But uh, we'll just prepare and then uh, we'll just work hard for the next game. Okay, coach, thank, thank you. you so thank you. Thank you. Okay.
Coach. Can you hear me? It's okay? Okay. Coach, um, the actions on this game um, deserve weight for Well, my, my hats off to Cebu. Huh? They, they played really well. I think a little bit, Yannick was a little bit too excited, you know, and things got a little bit physical, but uh, we were expecting this, that it was going to be a, a tough game, but uh, the guys played really well. You know, uh, we made the adjustments that we had to do uh, to prevent uh, Cebu from scoring. Uh, we played the man down for like 25 minutes, so the adjustments that, that we made uh, obviously you know, prevented them from scoring. So that was that's the most important uh, thing to do right now, is just to be able to you know, get past the first game, uh, win it, and then we have six days to prepare for, for the next match. So we'll know in the next few days who will be playing. I, it doesn't matter. At this point in time, I'm just so happy that uh, that the PFL and the PFF decided to hold the Paulino Cantor Cup. So I'm just happy that this is happening right now, honestly. Yes. Well, I'm very happy because now we're not that small anymore. You know, uh, Matthew was able to play in his natural position. Uh, Abe and Gabe, you know, that's our two monsters in the middle, Abe and Gabe. Uh, you know, a being selected the man of the match is, is, is a big, it's a, you know, a big plus and it also affirms that, you know, bringing them in was the right thing to do. Uh, um, Albu as usual, he, he played really well and I just want to, I just want to say this, you know, that we were dedicating this season to our captain. He's always going to be our captain, uh, Ruben Balot Uh you know, for personal reasons. Uh, we understand that that he has to take care of his family and everything. That's why when we, when we came out, you know, we had the shirt with us. You know, we want to make sure that we show him respect. You know, and and we hope to have him back uh, for the uh, for the league. Thank you. Uh, you know, um, we honestly thought it was going to, you know, be one of those games where, you know, we're, we're new team, you know, so it's going to be a broken game, maybe many goals. But, you know, I, I was glad it was this type of match where, you know, we showed our grit, especially with that red card. I feel like that is the best foundation a team could build off of, you know, having the, the shutout and, you know, and then working hard and man down. I think that proves, you know, that we're here to fight, you know, and some games are going to be like that. And, you know, I'm just happy to, you know, contribute what I did to the the squad. Dave, um, your thoughts on your playing at the back? Uh, you know, actually, we, we have a, we have a, we've played, we played together before, so I think, you know, we were here in unison, and I think, you know, the right and left backs, you know, they, they, they bought into our concepts and everything, so I feel like we were a pretty solid back line, and, you know, I feel like we did, we did our part fairly. Okay. What, what, what more can we expect from your team going forward? Uh, you know, I mean, it's 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 a new new squad, so I think we get we could expect you know much more connections, you know, much more composure. This is our first you know official game, so I think we're all getting used to each other as a, as a unit and everything. So I think only we only could expect more more chances, you know, more cohesion, and you know, more composure and you know on the red card. But I think it's nothing but a plus to move forward. Thank you. So much. Thank, Thank you. Very much. Thank you. you.